who, if you're here, obviously you know that this is a Linux users group. Uh, so. Good thing I had Oh, we got one more chair. <laughs> There's a few more, yeah. Okay, yes, I know that this is in presentation mode. Anyway, though, welcome. Oh, this is cool. Did you yeah. do that yourself? Or? This? The, the, the uh, pie chart. Is that part of Oculus? No, the, this is just a PowerPoint slide deck that's been uh, turned into a PDF. So because so how does it do the pie chart? That, you mean that? Oh, oh, sure. oh actually, yeah, that is that ocular there. Wow, that's a new feature since I used this last time. I, I've been really impressed. I like this. So anyway, I'm, I'm uh, gonna convert back. the topic of the day is window managers. Who needs them? Uh, actually, in all honesty, uh, uh, I also an alternative title could be how many uh, Windows managers can you install on a Pi 4 without it getting messed up? <laughs> Uh, oh, this is all on a Pi 4? <laughs> yes, yes the, this entire thing is running on that Pi 4 sitting right down there. Oh, that's funny. Uh, X minus 1. So the, the slide deck and everything else will be posted uh, and uh, video and all that stuff. Uh, and uh, Do you have them all running on different virtual terminals or something? No, it, it's all, uh, we're, <laughs> after the demo, we're going to flip because I don't think 4 gig uh, uh, memory was quite enough. Uh, so just a little bit about the setup of my lab here. Sorry, lab. Uh, it's a uh, Raspberry Pi 4. It's the 4 gigabyte of RAM uh, version. It has a 16 gig SD card on it. It really took less memory than what I, or uh, disk space than what I thought it would. Uh, and then these are just the standard specs off the interwebs. Uh, but uh, uh, so the distro of the day is Manjaro uh, Linux. And uh, part of the reason why I picked it was uh, thanks to Steven's uh, recommendation for an Arch uh, distro because they care more about how things look uh, on the like odd uh, desktop managers as opposed to like say Debian or uh, Red Hat where all their window manager I mean Red Hat all their window managers look like trash no matter what and Debian really just doesn't care about the alternative things so they don't make it look nearly as pretty uh, so Manjaro is an open source Linux based on the Arch Linux system it's supposed to be user-friendly, accessible, and works straight out of the box. Honestly, this was really, really easy, other than I had to figure out how to uh, reflash uh, the SD card uh, because I'd upgraded versions of OSX, and uh, apparently that broke my uh, uh, disk imager. So, reinstall. 32 bit. Uh, no, actually, it was still 64. Or it was what? the, uh, I think it was like sandboxing or something that they changed. Yeah, there, there was something. It just gave an error, so I went out and downloaded the latest one. Apparently, now they put advertisements in it. Okay. Whatever. I haven't actually hit anything yet that has stopped me since I upgraded. Uh, yeah. Steam, but then I just re downloaded it. I, I've been burned by a couple 32 bit stuff. Uh, one of the desktop publishing open source things that I use uh, apparently doesn't have a 64-bit build yet because no one cares. <laughs> so what operating system are you upgrading? Mac OS. Mac OS. You, you just no. upgraded to 64-bit now? No, they no longer no, support no, 32-bit anymore now. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. if it's if there's a 32 library buried somewhere in an app, it dies. Yeah. And it won't tell you why. Wait, yeah. you said Steam. So anyway, though, how did I download it? I just went to this Manjaro.org uh, 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 download image, downloaded the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, ISO of it, and just flashed it directly onto the SD card, and here we are. So I used. Uh, the Belina Etcher, and it, it's just easy, uh, stupid.
could even a caveman could do it. You click on the you select what image you want. You choose which disk you want to send it to, and you hit flash. It's easy. The only annoying thing is that now they try and uh, advertise that you should uh, uh, download their other project while it's flashing, which takes several minutes when you have a uh, crappy USB uh, uh, SD card uh, reader. And then, of course, once it boots up, the, the next thing you're going to want to do is uh, in the uh, distro's uh, configurations here, go to the preferences for in the, the update package manager, and then pick their uh, AUR, which is the uh, uh, repository. Equivalent of PPA. Yeah, it's, it's like the, the PPA, basically, it's all of the, the other packages they didn't care to really build, so you can build them yourself. Non non distro maintained. Yep. So, so it's the community I, stuff. I've I've gone in month of these personally. Yeah. Security and safety. Eh, but yeah. hey, I, I've contributed code to like three or four of these. So it they let me in. So yeah. So it, that, that should worry you. So if you can <laughs> trust Stephen. Is it building on their system yeah. like PPAs do? <laughs> yeah. uh, so the, the, the system <laughs> in uh, it, so it go, it's in the package manager. Like it's not just going to like throw it to some random spot in user lib or whatever, or user local or whatever garbage. It's actually going to be managed by the package manager. So right. that way, uh, you can uninstall it nicely. You can install it nicely. You can update it nicely. Yeah. Right. You, you won't so it'll it. actually make a real package at the other end. But uh, all of the bits that make it work is just one random text file called a package build, and you just type a bunch of garbage in there, and you put your button, you get a package. It's magical. And it compiles on your machine. Directly. Compiles on your machine. That's what I was asking. Yep. It also has a bunch of nifty, wonderful, magical tools built in to take just about any other distro's package system and be like, oh, nice package you got there. <laughs> I'm going to take that. So it's like Alien. Except it's like Alien, works. except it works really, really well all the time. Fair enough. I'm, I'm a big fan. So yeah. I don't know if you can tell. So anyway, though, Pac-Man is the uh, distro manager of the day. Uh, and basically all you need to know is Pac-Man dash capital S is for install. You just name what you want to install and it does it. Uh, basically when I installed all of these managers, I just listed them all in an order, hit return, <laughs> walked away, came back in like 45 minutes later and it was done. Uh, dash R, capital R, removes it, throw a lowercase r, or a lowercase s on there, it removes the dependencies as well. Uh, YOLO, if you add a, a C on there as well, it removes the dependencies. All the packages that, and then all the packages that depend on that target pra uh, package. So like say if you wanted to remove uh, libc. Libc. Yeah, if you did libc, <laughs> you're going to have a bad time. You, so, can, you can remove the kernel that way. So <laughs> be careful. There there be dragons. But the oh. beauty is, on a Raspberry Pi, all you have to do is just re-image the SD card and you uh, start back over again. Uh, if you want to upgrade da SYU, searching, and then you can also clean out the cache because it will actually keep around copies of all the packages. And if you want to downgrade... That's very important to you because they move at light speed. And uh, if you find any subtle incompatibility at a certain point, uh, you might you might decide you want to downgrade. And they don't always necessarily keep the old packages around yeah. so much. So you might want to at least keep like a week or so's worth because, you know, you so could have gotten 10 updates in that time. And <laughs> yeah. You might, you might want to go back one of them. So anyway, though, uh, apparently, whoa, got a little bit over carried away here. So now that we've uh, got our stuff all set up and running here, obviously, because it's showing this, uh, let's move on with the show. Uh, the first one was uh, KDE Plasma. 
It's uh, what we're actually running as window manager right now, built for QT5 um, and Plasma framework. It supposedly looks good on high DPI displays. This is a 4K d display, and uh, before I turned down the resolution so we could actually read it, it looked fabulous. If you uh, were about half an inch away from the screen, because it was... <laughs> but you should be able to do scaling. So you have yes. full resolution to scale, yeah. Yep, so I, but I just quickly, because like everyone was coming in like under five minutes and I really don't know KDE because this is the first time I've run it in like 15 years. Uh, I, I just quick figured out how to uh, reset it. Uh, so it uses XOR, I know the shame, but they are supposedly working on a Wayland port to make it uh, be in the future. Uh, I've run it before. It just won't work for the video. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it has its own full desktop suite, which is a theme you're going to hear an awful lot. There's a desktop search engine. Uh, activities has virtual desktops. There's uh, widgets that are called plasmids. Uh, Dol the Dolphin Window Manager. There's a great screenshot engine. And then if you want to install it and it's not in your, uh, if the version you installed isn't quite uh, up to date with this, you just install it, Plasma and KDE applications. It ends up looking like that by default. Not terrible looking. Or in our case, it looks like that. Yes? So what, what is it, Plasmids or Plasmoids or whatever, but... What are those widgets written in? Are they like JavaScript or? QML mostly. Yeah. What else? QML. QML. QML is a uh, markup language. It's a superset of JSON with okay. embedded JavaScript and or C++. So it's okay. kind of an amalgam. Which here in a couple of minutes we'll play around with a couple of them. Oh, really? Uh, so uh, next up, GNOME 3. Pretty much everyone's seen it if you have Ubuntu. I actually forgot to grab a screenshot of it, but it, it does uh, actually work uh, on this uh, machine, which is kind of surprising for a Raspberry Pi. But uh, it was first released in 99, uh, GNOME 3 switched over in 2011. Everyone hated it originally, but they fixed a lot of the stuff. I mean, even Linus uh, complained about it. Not surprising, Linus complains about everything. But uh, by 2013, uh, he had high praise. It, things have gotten much better, uh, but uh, and you can almost make it look as good as it did two years ago. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, moving on because I forgot a screenshot of it. We'll see it here in a little bit. But uh, Budgie uh, is the uh, Solus uh, Project's uh, desktop manager. Uh, uses the old GNOME GTK stuff. It's supposed to be elegant, minimalism, and I repeated elegance. Easy to install. Uh, Cinnamon, which is yet another GNOME fork that's pretty much mutated itself beyond being just a GNOME fork. Uh, they added in X apps instead, uh, and it's for the Mint distro. Uh, and basically, they're just forks and variants of it. But looks, again, very pretty. Uh, Mate uh, is basically people got ticked off and forked GNOME uh, too, and uh, then uh, ended up with a, a backronym of Advanced Traditional Environment. And basically now they're trying to claim that it's just like, it's just yet another desktop that has its genome based in GNOME 2. And the uh, interesting thing about it is that all of their uh, applications they've uh, renamed with Spanish names. Very descriptive on what exactly they're doing, like Pluma, Pen, it's a text editor. Uh, or uh, Lectern is uh, the document viewer, uh, etc. I mean, kind of clever. 
it depends on how good you are at Spanish on how that's going to work out. Otherwise, it's just yet another name. Uh, and it looks pretty much like uh, Gnome 2. Enlightenment, uh, or the Yi, is a composing window. It's the original eye candy manager. Uh, it's easier to show than tell here in a bit. It, it's very much a different window manager than uh, KDE or GNOME. And it looks really cool. I don't know that it will help your productivity much unless you uh, <laughs> like to drop acid. <laughs> <laughs> they have uh, they've had uh, support for motion desktops as one of their marquee features for fifteen years now. So I, I mean, it's very cool looking. The you can have a they'll they'll have like a lot of their nature scenes. The sun will go up and down in real time. <laughs> uh, it also is rather. It, it's definitely not a lightweight desktop in any way, shape, or form. I mean, it actually is. But it, it is. Like the actual the memory usage on it is is actually really amazingly small and uh, especially for everything it's doing the the guts of it is all the bits that run uh, the Tizen phone operating system or oh. Tizen watch operating system. Samsung oh really? Okay. So this is ah. Samsung deal. Well, Samsung Aqua hired the author, so this actually pre predates Samsung. Like it was open source before Samsung hired him, and he he kept kept. He kept all of his core stuff open source, and as he makes improvements for like, his watchOS stuff, he trickles it down. And so it's gotten a lot of efficiencies over the years. Right. Like I hinted, screenshots do not do it uh, justice. It's very animated. Yes. To, uh, maybe excessively so. Uh, LXDE, very lightweight, very Spartan. It's uh, one of the older of the uh, dates back to 2006 uses GTK2, and it's very good for old hardware uh, uh, netbooks and just really, really old crappy stuff that doesn't have much memory at all. Or Raspberry Pis. Or uh, Chromebooks or what have you. Oh yeah, Razer. Mm. Yeah, uh, LXQT, uh, there, there was a uh, uh, old project which was Razor QT and basically it merged in with LXDE and it I really couldn't tell much difference really I mean it, it's based on is of a, one is QT based and one is GTK based that's the big yeah difference. but in the end it, it really truly doesn't matter all that much if you'd like to run your KDE based apps and you don't want to pull in all the GTK GTK dependencies True. or vice versa yeah yeah it, so that's sort of matters. But uh, do you yeah. want to be more, of, like, you know, aligned with the known ecosystem or the KDE ecosystem? Yeah, you, you pick whichever one is your flavor, and you go with it, though. But again, very lightweight, very low resourced, and it runs really, really fast on this thing. Uh, XFCE is another really lightweight one. It's based on GDK two and three depending on which flavor you install. And uh, again, it looks very Spartan, but it's functional. Sugar, uh, this is uh, one laptop per child's one, and the one that I'm pretty sure screwed up my Wi-Fi when I installed it. Uh, it's intended for kids in educational use, and you do one task at a time, and you don't. Uh, have multiple windows or multitasking or anything like that, I wouldn't recommend using this one. <laughs> it was just generally totally crap and not really all that useful. I mean, it has some nice apps, but you, no sane person wants to do this unless you're like wanting to Tom Hanks style just type <laughs> on your typewriter <laughs> sort of thing. Uh, so Everything around it is based in uh, sugar names, so the graphical interface itself is glucose, and then uh, the base activities are part of the fructose uh, group, and then uh, sucrose basically will install both of them at the same time. 
They were way too clever. There's a lot of honey, or there's a lot of sugar involved in this. Yeah, and uh, if you want all the extra stuff, it comes in in honey. I mean, they, they were clever, but yeah. Uh, basically, you, you start out, you have, uh, this is your user, and then these are all the tasks that you can click on, and like say, if you want to paint, you click on the paint picture, or stuff like that. It, it's very simplistic. Uh, D-pin, based off of the uh, Chinese D-pin uh, distro, it's uh, QT based. Uh, allegedly, <laughs> it has some uh, fairly bad uh, security vulnerabilities, <laughs> according to the OpenSUSE uh, people. Uh, they pretty much have said that they're not going to be looking or doing anything with it until they fix their stuff, and apparently the uh, developers on the other end refuse to even talk to them. So, yeah, uh, use at your own risk. I didn't install it just because I didn't really want to mess with any of that drama, even though I'm going to re-image this uh, SD uh, card after I'm done. And plus, I already had installed a whole bunch of stuff on here, and it was starting to get a little bit wonky. So, uh, apparently it's rather famous for uh, both liking to phone home to a Google-like uh, uh, mm -hmm. tracking system, as well as it just likes to use CPU at weird, odd times, so it's <laughs> really not all that trustworthy, and I, I really, it looks cool, but I wouldn't recommend it. And there you can see a screenshot of it. I mean, it uh, looks neat, but yeah, there, there's plenty of other fish out there under the sea. And then the one that broke my heart because I absolutely love uh, Window Maker just because it's a great uh, next step emulator. But apparently, uh, the uh, in the, the distro p uh, package, it wants to do something that requires a, a non-ARM processor. So. I can't demo it for you today, but, and here's your uh, error message that you get. Again, it says it's pulling from uh, that uh, third-party package uh, set. You get just error, error window maker is not available for the R64 architecture. It goes to try and build it, and it fails. I could probably come up with about nine more if you wanted to do part two of this, by the way. <laughs> Yes, I, I, I went with what was easy to install quick, <laughs> and I figured there was a lot of these, so they, they, after a while they start to blend together. x men add x uh, Vat Poison, I3. Budgie, I3, I3. I3. Yeah. Did you get Budgie? Yeah, I did, yeah. Budgie, did you get yeah. Budgie? I missed it. Yep. So wow. here's a screenshot of it. I mean, it looks just like the old... Uh, it's open, open step. Open, open step, yeah. And I mean, it's elegant and uh, ugly as sin. <laughs> Is that a one if? Uh, yeah, probably <laughs> someone <laughs> doing some sort uh, of uh, or a clone. Some yeah, it's a clone. clone. Yeah. Or if they're predated one app to begin with and been there. Yeah, that's not one app. It's got the X window system X in it. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, they, these are just screenshots I pulled off of Wikipedia. Yeah. But uh, and then there's the. Only user submitted desktop submitted desktop picture uh, that we got was from uh, Justin. Uh, so yeah, he wins the award for the best looking uh, desktop because <laughs> no, no one else. Like, uh, the worst looking desktop. But it's a terminal. No, I think it's that team up. That's high res. Come on, Don. Yeah, they, they, but it's inside of the terminal window. He's got one window. Yeah, he has one window. There's a, there's, a, there's a graphical user interface on the bottom. That's a graph. Yeah, you see that little graph down there in the corner? You can see his desktop behind it. Yeah. There's, there's a graph. graph. There's like, a, like, like you know, an application launcher. Anyway, probably yeah. for him for easy. I emailed some stuff at the last minute, so. Oh, okay. I didn't know there would be in slides or anything. Uh, the first time I read that email, I thought it said a picture of your desktop. And I'm like, you want to see like the motherboard or with the case on? But then I reread it. And I'm like, yeah, uh, well, it's quick. So mine's also an ultra wide display. It may not display well. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Ultra wide. Yeah, it's like, like a twenty one by nine aspect ratio or something. Like, like, that. like the LGs, you mean? 
Yeah, like a curved. Uh, so what do you think of the curved? So I like it a lot. The, well, I've heard that. Yeah, you got the subscription check. Yeah, so a, here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's doesn't. Matte. It's matte. It has to be because if it's glossy, you get the slightest light in the room. Is that, is that it'll true? automatically so, hit you in the eye. eye. So this is my desktop. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, yeah, there's like no glare on it because it's curved. Like it. Mm -hmm. If they have a matte that coating on it, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, this is just Ubuntu. It's, it's, it's real simple. Yeah. Just the glass and Does Cal say no, always uh, so start up? Is that yeah. part of your RC it's file? No, I yeah, opened it up in I first old cat piped in Cal's house or the glass. Fortune screen underneath. Yeah. So it was Fortune screen to Cal State piped into Lal Ball Cat. Well, but you don't have those in our or start of Bash RC or. I, I rotated through the uh, the. Uh, uh, yeah, they've come way down. Depend, it depends on how good you want to wide screen one. I just like, like saw just like curved. Like yeah. eight hundred bucks. The most I saw. Oh, they, oh, I mean the most you can. No, they. Those are like the triple monitor, as we're talking. Yeah, you can, you can get ones that are like. It was like the entire thing. Yeah. Like for VR. It was 800 right? bucks, though. Yeah. I just went and bought a 4K monitor not yeah. long ago. So there's a couple of... Uh, that screen's interesting because by default it only has a, like five or six rows. And because I had an ultra-wide, I had just enormous amounts of empty space. <laughs> so I had an extension that allowed me to tweak it. Then I had to modify the source code of the extension to allow me to like actually put an extra rows beyond what it thought would be reasonable. <laughs> um, so you're unreasonable then? Well, they're like, they thought, they made it for a widescreen, you know, it's ultra, so. Yeah. Uh, and then you, I don't, I think there's an extension too, you can group and make essentially a folder icon, so I can keep all my icons on one. So like a fences. Yeah, because you can see there's a few of these little boxes with the icons within them. Yeah. <laughs> second from the right, yeah. on the top, and then yeah, no. second from the left on the bottom. Yeah. So that was another cool extension. So now, out of curiosity, what is Cherry Tree? Uh, it's a Notepad program. Oh, okay. Um, kind of like OneNote or whatever. So yeah, you can have like folders within it and stuff. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And it's uh, there's a database on the back end. Okay. Yeah. Mongo. Uh, this is just uh, I did the top half of it. When I full screen, it um, merges the windows at the top. So you get, like, you see your window control on the top right of, uh, yeah, those oh, two cards. That's cool. I like that. Puts it all there. Helps you focus. It works really well on a laptop, too. I, I had that. I thing. had an extension like that for KDE for a long time. Yeah. Another one was just, like, a default, like, your normal. Oh, they had a netbook, yeah. a netbook flavor. Yeah. You do that. That's, that's cool. Oh, Did you get the dynamic could, coloring on the top bar, too. Sorry, yeah, that's cool. No, no, no. Did you get the global? Do you have global menus or anything going on too? That's another thing that's usually common on your phone. Uh, yeah. Although I think I turned some of the menus off. Okay. That's cool. Well, did you turn them off for security or aesthetics or performance? Aesthetics only. Aesthetics. Yeah. Because you can just like right click, right click and get the menu anyways. So because why of the weird known client-side decorations, they're not consistent across applications, anyways. So I just like uh, if I, 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 I like say terminal. I set up my terminal settings once and then never touch it again, and so I don't need to see that stuff up there anymore. That's fair. Yeah. I'd agree with that. Uh, I don't change my terminal settings very often either. So anyway, though, cool. uh, for the whitest screen, Sean wins. <laughs> <laughs> so far. <laughs> yes. Uh, but, yeah, so anyway, though, it's always... How many, how many pixels is that? Oh, my God. Or it's how, like, how many inches is that? How many square? It's 27 diagonally. Is yours the... But because it's a weird aspect. Of it. It's probably, like, on your... On is the, yours based on QHD? Or is it based on 4K? I think it's 30, It's just under 4K. 3440 by 1440. Yeah. Because that's right. the so they they make two different styles of the ultra wide. There's one that's based on 4K resolution top to bottom. There's one based on QHD top to bottom. And then they just make it 21 by 9 aspect ratio wide. It's a 34 by 1440. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I think it was about life size when you had them up on the screen there. 
Okay, yeah, because uh, I, if, if you like dual monitor setup, I'd recommend this over it because you almost get the same amount of real estate, mm -hmm. but you don't have that annoying bezel right in the middle of your face. Mm -hmm. No, I would agree. Because I've got an LG flat screen like that that's also super it's, wide. It's the, it's the vertical space that's had, kept me from doing it. I had a triple monitor set up. It's, uh, it, it's really hard to find uh, an ultra wide than the D2160. Yeah, I really like my vertical space. <laughs> yeah. I had a triple monitor set up, but it wasn't three matching monitors. Two of them were matching, and the center one was different. But it just wasn't the same enough. And there's some uh, sync issues since the middle one was DVI and the outside were at. HDMI, so I said, screw it, I strapped that whole thing and got a 4K monitor. It's yeah. more pixels, so they seem yeah. to be doing well with it so far. Cool. Yeah, I, have, I have dual 4Ks and, uh, at home and work, and I, I, I'm, I'm spoiled. <laughs> Yours are spoiled. Hard I, to read, yeah. though, I guess. Because you, you have native. I brought native everything, always bring native. More pixels, yeah. more better. Amen. Just wait till you get old. Yeah. That's, why they, that's why they make oh. glasses. Well, no, the, the, it doesn't scale. help. Right? It the, really doesn't. I scale nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't no. help. Oh, okay. I yeah. used to be like that right. five or six years ago. Yeah. And now yeah. it really hurts yeah. to try to stare like that. Every time I'm just getting my I have, I have, I have like like some, some, some arms, arms that come out it's of my okay. desk. Then my monitor will be obsolete anyway. Oh, man. It's pretty great. I pair program with people sometime and they usually complain. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, these are some of the widgets that I just dropped down to here. Uh, basically, you can uh, you drag them into panels as well. Just go to uh, widgets. Oh, that's a binary clock. And yeah, you can just. Oh, it really is. By the time you figure out what time it is, it's different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's why you just have to count. Once you see it drop to the bottom, start counting one, two, three. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, most of these widgets, other than maybe like the weather and your CPU usage, most of them are almost useless. But I used Color Picker for a while when I had this. I would yeah. do a lot of web front end development, and I'd be like, "What color is that?" Yeah, so it's nice. It's cool. You could shamelessly clone people's designs. Yeah. <laughs> There's your search, though, and then you have your applications. It works. Some is running like seven desktop. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. but it's a five <laughs> four. It's a five <laughs> four, man. I should be able to handle it. So there was a Phronics article that came out not that long ago that where they compared to XFCE and uh, KDE, and KDE was lower on memory and. Uh, Dude, X XFCE wow. is crap, yeah. and pretty much always has been. I mean, Don't it know was, why. when it originally came out, it was well known as the, like, window manager for, it was fully featured. So, yeah, so the, the that's a thing, very large mouse. Yeah, but that was also comparing it to Nova now it's 2. Smaller. So, yeah, uh, so as you can see, all the Wi-Fi stuff, it, it somehow became sugar ad hoc networks. <laughs> and sugar modem connection. I, so sugar has was built in with um, mesh networking. I was going to say they're just trying to tie them all together on mesh. Yeah. So oh, there was a sense. whole thing where, like, even if there was like only a Wi-Fi connection, like six uh, six villages over, as long as they'd was, all like, share. Yeah. As long as there yeah. was a you know person every so often, we would like Wi-Fi extend it all the way out. But when it's time to update, it has it every time it's mm -hmm. Wi-Fi extended. <laughs> Mesh networking is a little different than that, the normal Wi-Fi extender. But like, like, like yeah, that's yeah. more like if Google. You have more than one. Yeah, yeah, but I'm like Google. But if it's only one each, it's the same thing. No. Yeah. Well, but I mean, there's the idea is you like have a distributed in each spot. Yeah. It does add latency. And it does add latency. Yeah, latency, like, uh, but the signal doesn't act a lot. Deteriorate. Yeah. Well, I and think the idea know. is it's more like Google Home uh, routers yeah. or whatever. Well, your the alternative or, is nothing. Yeah, yeah, do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, satellite? Which the latest, nobody ever complained about satellite latency ever. <laughs> right. But well, they complain it's about they can't work for it. internet connection. Yeah. It's just sarcasm. Uh, <laughs> I thought so. Anyway, so. Though, I saw it throw it out there. It's like, oh yeah. Go ahead and leave and uh, enter into the foray of weird uh, desktops here. So what was that desktop? Was that Pudgy? That, that was actually uh, Plasma. Plasma. Okay. Okay. 
That was KDE? That was KDE, yeah. KDE's so, come a long way. You, we'll start with Bucky. <laughs> I was more excited to see KDE. Well, you. So that's the mm -hmm. Pi Gene Arden version, right? Like, yeah. If, if you, there's the other more prettier versions, and there's a lot of customization you can do with it. That, that's yeah. kind of the raison d'etre of KDE, though. You can make it look like anything. Yeah, yeah so okay. here is Bucky. Is that how you pronounce that? What? I don't know. I, I'm just going with it. I'm not French. So the old school don't, don't hold me to it. Wow. Oh my, oh my, oh my. That is some tiny, tiny. Yeah, the, the, if you think it's tiny. <laughs> <laughs> but like, like I said, uh, how the tables have turned. What, what is this? Budgie. This budgie. is Budgie. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I've never seen Budgie. I'm interested. Yeah. Uh, Looks, why is there a foot in the corner? Because it's uh, gnome uh, I base. Want is it really? Yeah, that, that looks like, like the gnome menu. Yeah, it's yeah the gnome too. It looks yeah. very gnome too. I'm I'm turned off already. I want it. <laughs> you could just replace it with the arch menu if you want. But yeah, so I mean, you can play games, etc. It works. Uh, right clicking, you can go. Oh, it displays. Maybe it will let us scale something. Yeah, scale something. I don't here. think gnome two is capable of that, is it? Wait, uh, this looks like a gnome three setting yeah, panel. It's, yeah, it's gnome three based. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, then number three probably can handle it. Yeah, you know. Can you at least turn down the... Ember <laughs> <laughs> ah, gone. Oh, I can read things. Uh, it's gross, though. I think you picked a 4x3 resolution. Yeah. Five by four. Oh, 5 by 4 Okay. 85? That's an 85 inch? Let's go with... It's not 85 inches. It doesn't look 85. It's not. It thinks it's 85 inches, but that's not an 85 inch. There we go, that's a little more sane. Probably 40 or 50. But you can also scale as well. Oh, yeah. Why don't you scale it and throw it back to 4K? Okay. Uh, just wrote a previous. Let's go back to 4K. Well, you should, you know. Okay. Well, we're here now. Oh, that's it's a 4096 4K, too. Because, like, mine is 3120 or whatever. Yeah, that's, so that's... This is, like, a real 4K. This is, like, the 1610 version. Wow, almost. this is a... They got a really badass monitor here. Yeah. Right. Anyway, though. Is it slowing Ooh, down when it does like gravitate? Like when it's, it rises up? Oh, yeah. It yeah. looks like it. It's yeah, it's <laughs> a struggle with that. Huh. Uh, I wonder if it, like, GPU scaling isn't, like... Well, also uh, notice that it said it was refreshing at 23 well, some hertz. The, oh, yeah, that, that's probably it. 23 hertz is nice and slow. The, yeah. Three and earlier. We got the soap opera. Yeah, I was built in. We're, it's D4. Yeah. Native Ooh, that was at cool. 1080. Okay, so that was Budgie uh, Cinnamon. I'm just impressed that you got these to all in function on the same machine without Docker. Yeah, I would not have thought to do Docker's that even in a demo. What? Docker's not really Your application like you launcher could, menus you know are going to be <laughs> full of <laughs> shit too, because you're going to have yeah. all yeah. of the key <laughs> apps, all, all of the known key apps, all of the Oh, I can't get it done in a month. I can get it done by next year. This is going to be like, year, like next year. December. Okay. 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 December. Nine file managers. Yeah. Yes. Like their SD card. Yeah, this thing's fire. starting to kind of grind. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's starting to overheat because of the uh, 4K monitor. Pushing too many pixels. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Not really yeah. tiny. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> yeah, it right. looks like it's got a little bit of a. You can still frags with it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. used to have a heat sink? And yes. <laughs> That's a good you question. Though. Cut in here quick. Yeah, let's go ahead and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Make sure fan. You know what we're gonna do? We'll just uh, unplug you, unplug it here, and uh, take it let it cool Come down for yeah. a couple minutes. Yeah. Take it you want me to stick take it inside the uh, freezer in the kitchen area? Uh, no, we don't want condensation. Can't go that much. Uh, yeah, here we we, we can. Uh, change. See, I think you don't get condensation, so you bring it back in. Swap uh, spots here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, I also, if you want. I think I could probably install enlightenment pretty fast. What you were talking about? Demo that. Docker desktop. Yeah. Uh, it will cool yeah. down and it actually boots up really fast. <laughs> it sounds like a good idea. Until you okay. try it. Yeah, this. Push me my HTML. So. It doesn't sound like a good idea, but it sounds like a challenge. <laughs> so the fun thing is, all of these work. work. Uh, so you can get a <laughs> <my sleep basement. laughs> on Windows 10 by using okay, Windows so, subsystem uh, for Linux. Can you, you can so get have, uh, GNOME or another DB like running. Mm -hmm. Actually, like it's okay. a challenge. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. But it's like well, that. I was going to say, sort of. I mean, why not just have a VM at that point? Unfortunately, what? this is from 2014, well, so the battery is not here. Yeah. Is this mini? You're you know? sort of in it. Yes. Ew. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. Sort of. It'd but be a lot easier to just spin up a VM. Rather okay, you're going to... Is there still only one HDMI port? I thought they were two. There are two, two mini HDMI ports, but they only send you one mini oh. HDMI cable. Well, this is... Uh, I can't find the second port. Oh, wow. My uh, login display is uh, on the other screen. Maybe it's useful. <laughs> Ah, where's my mouse? <laughs> I did not anticipate this part. Sorry, friends. Okay, so this is tiny. Um, possibly I should uh, scale it. Control. Oh, I thought you didn't you scale. Bigger screen. Well, I think I scaled it. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, I think there's a certain amount of empathy. I actually more pixels, more better. There's empathy when you when your face isn't right in front of the screen. No, I think there's empathy when I have to present to other people. What's, what's that background screen? Where's okay, that? Okay. Where's that at? at a, a beach. I think this is default gnome background screen, actually. Uh, like, I think it's from the internet. internet. Uh, device yeah, but what country? Is, well, I think it's like a fjord in like some Scandinavian place. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Linus's house. Here we go. Let's see if I can do <laughs> Yeah. Does How does that look? It's not Linus's house. Like, it has to be. <laughs> yeah. No, I. Really? I that's I scaling? Uh, I think it's I say, actually. Uh, I'm actually you scared. scaled your built-in display. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, green let's one. try that. Okay. Green one. There you go. <laughs> Man. Yeah, there we go. That's good. So the bad thing is, is one of the things I was... Uh, like when, I, when I came in to uh, present on, so was... Uh, so if you find yourself that, you know, we've gone through all of the list of... Uh, Display managers, and you decide that none of them. Oh God, I did a bad thing. <laughs> uh, okay, well, uh, we'll you just skilled, you skilled yours yeah. back to a hundred. Yeah, mine is not back to a hundred. If you look oh. at mine, it's <laughs> not back to hundred. Mine is like four hundred. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on, but this looks oh, fine. Is it, is it because that window is half over the other window? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, yeah it could be confused can about association. Oh, yeah, no, no, that is what it is. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I have so, that same problem. With my okay, so uh, what parties. I was going to present on is if you decide that none of these display managers is your speed, and, you know, you're just going to stick with terminals, and you're going to be terminals for life, and you never, you know, that, that's where you live. Uh, I was going to present what I found several months ago and I thought was a pretty cool tool but didn't have a chance to try out too much was a um, web browser to help you stay in your terminal-only land and still have all sorts of nice creature comforts like HTML5 and CSS3 and uh, video support and mouse support and audio support and uh, full JavaScript support, uh, ECMAScript 7, uh, whatever. So this is, uh, I'm going to display Broush, and I'm going to display Broush's homepage in Broush, and uh, I'm going to discuss the many, many, many limitations I discovered about this <laughs> hacky, half-baked project trying to do a whole bunch of craziness. Okay. Uh, oh, damn it. Um, so this must mean that I must have one running somewhere. 
Hello. Okay, here we go. I have one here. Oh, well, this works too. Okay, so this is browse actually in a terminal terminal. This is their website. And then I am going to quit out of it because I wasn't going to show it in that order. So we're going to go back. <laughs> okay. Coming back. Coming back. Uh, okay. Is Browse a good substitute for links? It's good. Yeah, it's just took it. Did I not wait long enough? Come back, please. Oh, God. I thought oh, they were God. angry enough uh, with mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to yank the hit him up, and we're going to re, re hit him up. Come on, hit him up. Ah, oh, yay! Okay, so, so, the, so you, this is actually sort of okay. I can work with this. This helps display a uh, key part of the architecture of how Browse is put together. What Browse is is a headless Firefox. Uh, it's basically someone took Firefox, uh, lobotomized it, and cut, shut it, chopped its front end off, and it's the whole display part of it. And basically runs the Firefox renderer headless, and then um, extracts all the texty bits from it, and then JPEG compresses everything else, and then sends it to a terminal emulator um, display that is. Uh, I don't know what the. I, I don't actually know what the toolkit. That it's a TUI, which is a text user interface, which means that it's not quite command line because it runs as, you know, something like this. Oh, come on, mouse. And so, you know, you know, <laughs> loop, and then animations, and all that other weird way. Oh, man, and this is stuff. pretty good compared to the, uh, what was the last text browser I used? Links. Links, that's what yeah. I said. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, it, and it does JavaScript. It does all sorts of crazy things. Much, much I did, better. Uh, Daily Motion was one of my favorite demos here. <laughs> so for some reason, the, uh, the demos of this that they have on their official website and uh, you know on YouTube, I'll use YouTube to demo the, uh, the video capabilities. For some reason today, I couldn't make YouTube work. But Daily Motion and Vimeo both work just PG. So I, I'm assuming that <laughs> something has changed. And now we can watch the impeachment vote. <laughs> In glorious 8 bit. Uh, yeah, and, and the links will work, and, uh, oh, come on, get Coco. Now, is audio also downscaled to be... I, I haven't actually got audio to work, but according to the developers and the documentation, it is supposed to, but I think that's more a limitation with my sound setup, and uh, the, like, seven audio devices on this computer, it's probably a stop from the wrong one, and I, I did not take the time to figure out it out. Okay, come on, play. No, we Eight can, bits might really improve so, the quality of this viewing <laughs> experience. Well, maybe I have to, I understand. Think of Vic 20. I'll send to my cookies before they play for me, I don't know. Anyways, so uh, so that's another thing I can I can display to you. So control L is, uh, is the shortcut key for, uh, control L is the shortcut key for entering the uh, URL, and control backspace is the shortcut key for backspace, so we can, we can go back to, uh, Hopefully them actually playing. Oh, I do see a little movement there, but not a lot. Anyway, so it, it, it actually, I have gotten several videos. Uh, it actually works with my scrolling mouse here. Wow. Uh, so it works. Okay, so <laughs> that we can start talking about some of the caveats. Well, I guess I, well, I can say it's one got last picture. I can say one last thing that uh, <laughs> that uh, that it, it can do. Here, I'll go. Let's try. One of the things I was trying before is I was googling crusade. So, uh, and so, um, the one last thing is it'll actually work with Firefox extensions. And so, <laughs> I have one extension installed, and really the only extension I care about, which is VimVixen. And it sort of works with VimVixen. It doesn't totally work. So, if I go F, F should be the hint mode. Well, actually, at first I can do HJKL7 colon okay. Well, maybe, maybe not. No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but if I type F, Supposedly, I'm supposed to get hint mode, and if I want to go to Wikipedia Crusades, I should be able to type Y, and we can go to Wikipedia Crusades, and now we can, you know, read about the Crusades at our leisure. And it look, makes a pretty fully featured Wikipedia experience. So.
So the idea behind this mostly is if you're in a Docker container or you really want to stay in a Docker container and you would really like to not have to do X forwarding your stuff or you're remoted to SSH to a machine, you can like you can like help diagnose weird fiddly bits that are affecting your internet and go hit HTML5 CSS things without you know uh, needing needing a full. Uh, so how much how tough is it to install then? It's it's well with mine it was Pacman install Broush. Actually I had to do AUR, but it was really easy. But it actually comes. I actually recompiled a version of that. That's one of the things I was going to say. So the next thing that I did. I gotta quit this. That I wanted to demo is I'm like, well, it works in this terminal emulator in a fully graphical environment, just PG, you know. But that's really kind of like, why would I care if I have a full graphical environment anyways? Why don't I just run Firefox proper? What really I think this matters to me more is, well, it'll work if we're SSH this way, and then on the, you know, it'll it will have the full true color come trickling back. But like, you know, what happens if I install it? What if I install it on real terminal mode? And what if I run it there? So then, if I go browse, you're going to see the first major limitation. So <laughs> it only, out of the box, will support 30, or true, true bit 32 color. And if you don't, if your terminal is not capable of true bit 32 color, <laughs> you can go up a creek. And guess what? The Linux kernel, by default, with frame buffer, will not do 32-bit color. The max I will do, I think, is 256. And so this will try to do interpolation. This is called interpolation, friends. You see that white and gray? That's it's trying to make the, just the right kind of off-white. And everything looks like <laughs> garbage. So, and, and, and also, if I try to do the same Vim Vixen thing that I had going, and I try to type, you know, F, well, now you can't see anything, because all the orangey things get overlaid by the interpolation, so you can't actually read the hints to go to do anything anyways. <laughs> And there's even, there's more. Okay, so. I wonder if you could cha make changes to the color mode. I don't, the, 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 you're jumping ahead. Okay. <laughs> so the other thing is, I, I went ahead and I'm I like. I dial up server. Uh, so so. I, I went ahead and I really, you know, I have, uh, I went and installed GPM mouse. And I've never had GPM mouse in my terminal before. Uh, G GPM means general purpose mouse. It is a terminal based mouse system. So you can have a, this little cursor here, this little block, is uh, a mouse cursor. And in normal TUI apps, this will actually work. Like, uh, but in the, for whatever reason, they do not have support. I can click all day, and my clicks don't work. Though in in the in a graphical terminal land, peach. Here, go to hell. So there's uh, so there's a lot of limitations. I think the author of this only ever saw it as an SSH tool and never thought to run it on his own box. Um, I don't know. So then, so I thought, you know, that there's there's a few other things you can do with this. Um, so I was grumpy about this particular, this particular caveat bothered me, and so I tried to solve it for today, and I will get out. So what I did is I downloaded Browse source code, and by default, in their their base directory of their thing, they have all of the source code and a Docker file, and so I went in and I found the part where it said. Uh, X terminal true color as the terminal part, and I changed that to X terminal 256. I put Docker build, and I made something called Browse Bin. If you see in the corner there, that's my image that I made. So now I'm going to Docker run, and 256 color. Oh, We're back yeah. in business. Nice. So, and then if I do, you know, Wikipedia.org slash wiki slash <coughs> I'm curious where that limitation was. Uh, it was entirely how they had it configured. In the source code. Was yeah, it, so yeah, it, it looks default. like garbage, but it eventually it'll figure it out. Mm. You can go back to reading about the Crusades. There's a few limitations with this. <laughs> Character coding. Uh, yeah, uh, not working great. So there's a few limitations with this. Uh, one of them is possibly due to how my graphics card is rendering my frame buffer terminal environment, which may or may not be accelerated at all. But so, so I say I go back to dailymotion.com and I try to play a video. At least at home when I did this, my computer started making all sorts of horrible whining noises and, <laughs> and, and started dying. So I think there's some, there's some lack of GPU acceleration here that just... Yeah, are you using Nuvo or the proprietary driver? Kind of neither. So this is a, uh, this is, 
Stock came with a uh, dual video card SLI, and uh, which made it so it was not Optimus capable. Um, but I, repl I, I took, I, I, after market purchased a DVD drive for it, and I replaced my second GP with a DVD drive. And the reason I did that, that makes it so I can access the Intel chip, because for whatever reason, you can't access all three GPs at once. And so it's actually, and the, one of the reasons I did that is for better Linux support. So um, Reddit, what's now running is Bumblebee, and it actually is not an Optimus-capable laptop, but it does work with Bumblebee just fine for some weird quirk of nature. And so <laughs> it's actually running on the <coughs> right now. Um, the detection routines for Bumblebee and Optimus are going to be different. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right. So uh, wonderful thing, the Linux community can support me when Windows cannot. So basically what I had, what I did do is I, what I originally did is I dual booted it and I left my, dual, my Windows half dual booted GPU all the time. And basically, it, if you shove the other GPU in, it'll go into Windows. <laughs> when you boot it, it'll do Windows. Uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, it'll work in Windows. But otherwise, it won't work in Linux. So if you, like, accidentally boot in the wrong OS with the GPU left in, it'll, it'll harf all over the place. And if you boot in the wrong OS with the GPU out, it'll also harf all over the place. Well, recently, it, it also, uh, Windows Update decided to ruin my Windows half of the thing, so I just deleted it. So um, I have a Jextra GPU that I'm not actually using, but, you know, it's also five years old at this point, so it's probably not that useful anyways. Uh, but yeah, so obviously, video's not doing a thing. They're not what they're doing. So in, in, if you actually run it in the terminal mode, I've made a few changes to make it more operational, but there's still some less operational -y things. And uh, the last thing I can share is how to install those extensions. So let's say you want uBlock Origin or some other thing for your security things, because everyone is fairly secure oriented here in a way that I probably am not, but I can I can I can, I can try to try to accommodate. Um, basically what you do is there's a way you can do dash dash with UE I believe. And I think I am looking into my history because I don't remember this command. Uh, <laughs> but basically you run with GUI and it's like um, it'll launch up a really crappy looking Firefox display with uh, that's very basic. And that's the actual, the headless Firefox display. Display It's actually attaching to your X server. Let's see if I can find it in my history. You can see where this is where I'm uh, editing my custom Docker version of it. in there, and you can actually see it's mirroring what I'm doing on this other terminal thing, which is weird, but you know, that's how it works. So you can really see how it works there. I can go to add-ons here, and if I go view block origin, I should be able to go loop and add to Firefox. Does and I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to be able to tell that it's actually installed correctly, but uh, I do that, I do this, I quit out. In theory, quit out, quit out. Okay, no, that did not work. The control C, did that work? Oh, okay, so we had a thing. Let's play Christian Enter a whole bunch. <laughs> reset. I should be able to see. Type in clear on Suezos. Or reset. Clear command not found. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I uh, we might need to have a new terminal. So this is where you can see where my desktop currently looks like. It's pretty boring and fairly close to GNOME uh, 3, uh, but it has all the KDE icons because I can't stand the GNOME. So, uh, oh god, oh god. Okay, there was. Oh yeah, you missed But if I just do browse here, in theory, now uBlock Origin should pop up. I don't know how I'm going to tell this, except if I go to a very ad-heavy website and see if I'm going to get blocked. MSN.com. CNS. Yeah. Uh, TMZ. TMZ, that's... Okay, we can yeah. try it. I don't know. Yes, I don't see the ad. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I have. Yeah. Well, I don't know, because I go to... The I uh, use the yeah, board both those boxes so on the right. The ads Either one of those two boxes on the right should have been... Oh, see, that's there bad. it pops up. Yeah. Let's try it. <laughs> so that one awesome. didn't block. But the one for the further right, it did. Yeah, okay, so an extension functioning 
in uh, from Firefox, <laughs> manually like jankied into a brow uh, console based browser. No, did so, you did you have a use for this? Um, <laughs> mostly my use is I was hoping to rent it from the terminal and like if I was low on battery, just fuck fuck no, uh, fuck Axel really. Wayland and try try. <laughs> But I don't actually think that's a good use case because I think I actually use more power when I turn off all the graphical acceleration trying to run terminal only. Uh -huh. uh, but I guess my other use case is um, frequently uh, I will log into EC2s at work, and uh, and I, I'm just test they're ephemeral from, from EC2s, and I and I'm trying to debug. Uh, Debug the graphical environment, or de de debug the uh, cloud environment that's being deployed to production, and which is different than my local machine. And I'd like to be able to, you know, see what the world looks like from there. And I, because everything's ephemeral and I'm lazy as all heck, I'm too lazy to actually install VNC in an actual graphical system to remote into, or or you know, X11 remoting, whatever it is, you know. It's easier to just do this, you do it from an SSH. So like, and then, you know, usually yeah. like the things I want, uh, I like you know, that. I should be able to do with this. So one of my use cases is if, if I need to go, you know, quick download, uh, you know, I, in one of my, my previous uses for links is like, Let's say I need to quick download GCC and, and I, or like a version that's not in the package management system. You have to go, to go look in a web browser and how are you going to get a web browser on a server machine? Bam. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah, and then if you have Docker accessible, you can just run Docker blah yep. and uh, you, there's, you don't need to install anything. So, for example, in our cluster environment, in theory, you could go run a cluster uh, browser in your cluster environment and it should work. Now, when you installed this, <laughs> and obviously Firefox is some sort of dependency. Did it use your existing Firefox? Did it pull its own down? And it it uses my existing Firefox because I know that uh, it it had a piece in there where it's one of the things on the browse web page. If we I go back to that, yeah, we uh, brow dot sh. Yeah, and I was uh, like, it's, wondering it will say in the, the installation time. right on the front page, I believe. Uh, the only dependency is a uh, 57 plus version of Firefox. So it does use the system Firefox because... So if you bring up your system Firefox right now, uh, if uBlock Origins added to it... It's different. It's different, okay. Yeah. So I have a whole so bunch of extra extensions and I noticed it did not include any of that. It documents. sort of uh, runs it as a different profile then? I, I don't know exactly Probably. how that works. Yeah, it could be a different version too. That's what I was asking. Was yeah. a separate version? More than just profile. It could be like the binary. Sure. Like the version number. Yes. Yeah. Question? Yeah, I was just curious about your Windows conundrum. What, what Windows up, what was it, what Windows did you have on there that it killed? Windows 10. Oh, really? I've, every Windows 10 update. Oh, yeah, Windows 10 is yeah, like breaking a lot of things. Yeah. I've had to no, use I know. It breaks a lot of things. I just wasn't expecting them to hear that. Every, every Windows 10 update I've had on my personal machines, it's either completely irrevocably destroyed my system or it has taken greater than three days of munching through registry values and running <laughs> uh, emergency mode things to undo the changes it did to make it so I could safely update. Poor people it, is a laptop tech. like five years old though? Is that what the deal is? No. Uh, well, the last thing it did is it wouldn't work with my NVIDIA, NVIDIA GTX 970 GPU on my desktop. It just and that killed my Windows update. And because I didn't happen to update my Windows driver five minutes, it was released like 10 minutes before the Windows update, I didn't happen to click the buttons in the right order. Uh -huh. uh, I had to I had to do some unholy things to the registry and like uh, a bunch of crazy shit in safe mode. For, it was like a 30 step process. It's really it. kind of ruined me on wanting to run Windows. No, no, I, I, I would agree. That would be too yeah. painful to replicate again. So F-Disk is a service pack. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> so, and also, you, you have to understand kind of my philosophy on, on, on operating systems. Um, this Arch install is from uh, July 2014, and that is from about an hour from when I bought this machine. So I have not in reinstalled this operating system since. Um, 
my previous install that I had before that on Arch, my first uninstall was in 2008, and I have not, that went, we went from there to the, this. I bought a new laptop in 2014, and it's been straight on through. So I, I, I do not want to do, oh, the new version of Ubuntu or Red Hat come out. Let's go restart from scratch. No, never. But what I will do is I will run system pacman syu and it will do all sorts of crazy unholy things to my computer, you know, twice a week. So I find that to be a much more manageable way to do things because I have continuity all the way through. So I have to do fairly involved update things, you know, once a month or so. But uh, I find it much less disruptive because I have continuity all the way through and I never have to reinstall anything. So it's under the idea of do a uh, distasteful thing often enough and it becomes you not get Stockholmed. <laughs> <laughs> For the most part, uh, the, the, if, as long as you uh, system pack my nest value often enough, which is usually for me as long as you at least do it uh, twice a month, uh, any issues that come up will be on the home page of Arch Linux itself. And uh, you just look up and they have like a two minute fix and you go, <laughs> Change one little configuration file here, change one little configuration file file there, push enter. Just yeah, like editing the registry. So you just, you, just <laughs> you, change, you change one or two configuration files oh, every couple of months instead of having to reinstall yeah, everything every two years. Which, to which I, I find to be project. much more so. Yeah. But so the Jaro will like package some of that better so it's not as yeah. much of a pain in the ass. So, to be fair, I greatly enjoyed being an incredible amount of. Uh, Micromanager and choosing everything. So, just maybe why I like KDE a lot. Mm -hmm. so. I have to admit, I was rather impressed by Manjaro and how just nice it was. Yeah. So. Anyways, uh, I do not mean to take away from the rest of the presentation. If you'd like to no, take no, over again, so or if you'd like to talk about the more administrative matters of the evening, there's a non administrative point matter too. Vim just basically. runs Vim inside Firefox. So, so I will do. I'll show you how it works. It's pretty great. So, uh, so uh, okay. Well, do maybe let's do uh, slash up. And uh, so, for example, I can do uh, G T. Oh no, I can escape, escape. Yeah. You, uh, I might have to go to the website. Anyways, uh, one of the things you can do is you can do things like F and like A H. Now we'll go to that thing. And then F, and then A F. Well, I clicked on one of them. I didn't mean to. F and C. You can you can uh, use the H J K L to go all around. You can do G T. You can do G T. So you don't have to use the mouse. You can use G T wow. to switch tabs. Yeah. G T to switch tabs back. For whatever reason, the the launch page for Firefox is not work. But everything so else does. How do you put out of it? Uh, you can you can call in W. Uh, sorry, can, that, that was oh. a joke. Oh, yeah. Oh, so no, you can also, no. like, slash So if you, if you call in W, can you, like, do call in W in a file name and just write your web page to the, to the local uh, file I system? I don't think that works, no. But I think colon O will work, uh, but not on this page. Um, mm -hmm. For whatever reason, the main... Well, you should try colon W space with a file name and see if it does HTML. I don't think it will. They might want to go to a real web page first, because it I seems to... I can try. I can try. Okay. Colon W... With the file name. Uh, no, see, it doesn't. You can see that it has all the things on the bottom there, and write is not a thing. So it's it's a slightly modified version. What about Q, but like slash will work, and I can be like house, and you can see all the houses, and and, and so like you know, control D, control D. Can you search in a place? Uh, can I what? No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a browser. It's just some of the browsery things, Matt. And, and that's the, the mean. A lot of that is because I spend most of my day in some kind of IDE that has a window. Uh, <coughs> I don't remember to type Control F anymore to to find things. Yeah. So it's remapping. So my brain but the browser is, already has two Vim. Yeah. Yeah. Um, commands and you do you that do, in enough of your windows you that can do you do call and help to and it will remember yeah. show you all of the things. Type in colon. It has autocomplete down here of all the things you can want to do. So. Wow. Does it have like the module plugin support too? No. <laughs> I wouldn't expect it to. I was just gonna. No, no. Uh, no. It's a it's a it's a Vim inspired thing. It isn't running actual Vim. So. Uh, 
so you can't set color to run or anything <laughs> like that. Now you could probably create a bit of macro to run Brow.sh on launch if you really wanted to, and then you might be able to have more. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, that, there's also Vroom for Chrome, and Vimium is another Firefox alternative, and I don't know. There's there's quite a few. This is the one I've chosen, but I know I've used several. So Vimium. Oh, Vimium is is another Firefox one. Uh, it's a little older, I think. It's not Chromium based. It's Vroom. Vroom is the Chrome based one. Oh, wrong. V R O M. Okay, I believe you. I'm just trying to keep it straight. Uh, they they get credit for box. clever names. <laughs> they name things like names. Microsoft does. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. Do you Anyways, uh, do you want to do you want to cut in here and do uh, yeah the administrative? I, well, and maybe we well, there's so, some social things too. Yeah, I think uh, Dan has an announcement about the science fiction uh, Not, events. Yeah. yeah so, um, who are who knows who saw that on Slack and who didn't? I, I, saw, I saw something. Like I didn't, didn't really look very hard. Well, so I put in our events. So there's a science fiction night, December 29th. That's a Sunday night. Okay. But it actually starts like 4.35 o'clock. We'll have a double feature probably of Primer and probably something more recent. Potentially the newest Terminator or something like that. Or something else suggested is to be determined. So... Somebody else has got a better idea. Please let me know. It's not officially decided. Shotgun rules. Uh, suggestions? But yeah, it, as a suggestion uh, for those who are in IRC, it's better to post it in the main channel because none of the other ones are actually bridged. Oh, well, sorry about that. Because it's actually a bot that cross What are the other ones again? Uh, Random switch to Linux. I think we have one more. Events. I put in events. You haven't missed anything. No one says anything in the other channels except for Dan. So. <laughs> I've seen other people talk in the other channels. Neo Matrix Jr. created the Switch to Linux channel. And there was some discussion there for about five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And and really yeah all of his problems were solved in like a hot minute, and or he didn't like the solutions people had. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so how about this? How about this? No, I want it to do this, and I want it to do it this way, and it has to be like this. Like this. Yeah. So the the other part that I had planned on, if we had had time, but we kind of got overly excited, uh, was to sort of talk about how the year's gone and what people want for the next uh, uh, year's worth of stuff. Slash also shameless plug for volunteers to present. Instead of volunteers, you're voluntold to. Uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, uh, but seeing as it's uh, almost 8.30, we're, uh, we, we can definitely postpone that till next month uh, if people would rather do that. One of the big questions is, so uh, we, we've been sitting at about 8 to 10 people for the last long little while. If people are okay with the way that the lug is operating and w what we're doing, uh, we, we can sort of keep on keeping on. Uh, they, there's going to be a survey coming out here uh, for a little bit better, especially the, the folks that I, I'm not preaching to the choir on, since I, you guys are the ones who come, so uh, harder to expand beyond that. Uh, Location-wise, I mean, DMAC were kind of squatting somewhat. Uh, <laughs> we just had security guards. Yeah, yeah. The, the security guards will let us in. Social uh, proof to that. Uh, no problem. Let's let Yes. <laughs> if you, I, the reason why we didn't hold it there this month is because I wasn't sure when the final section <laughs> hit. And Twelve is when they ended. It's so probably I, could have. I, I figure, well, I figure no one's there right now, so the doors are all locked, and I really don't like standing out in the cold waiting for the security guy to show up, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do people like sort of the roaming different spot, or? I can't say that anything bothers me. Y'all could just continue on as is. As long as you know where it's at. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so long I, I know where it is. I, mean, I realized I was a little slow on announcing location. Oh, that's Honestly, I think remembering which 
uh, Wednesday is the third Wednesday of the month is harder than figuring out. That's why I remind you. This is what this is what every teacher has ever told me in like since ever. It's like, yeah, and uh, Wednesday nights seem to be working for folks at seven or, I mean. I don't think we want to go any less than once a month uh, because of the fact that then not only will you have to remember what's the third Wednesday, but you'll also have to remember what's the third Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think part of the reason why our numbers have somewhat gone down from the days of yesteryear are number one, uh, there's a lot of user groups and different fun. <coughs> nerdy groups around now. Plus, Linux isn't that hard anymore. I, I have a small suggestion. Yes. Uh, most of the user groups I've ever been a part of, I found through Meetup. Have you ever contemplated putting a Meetup page and trying yes. to like, keep it updated? And Did anyone notice it that way? Uh, so, yes, I, I have thought of that. Are you willing to sponsor us in uh, running it? Because that's how Meetup makes their money. Is yeah, they charge you. Oh, they, just they, they charge you a fee. Really they charge you a yep. fee to form Fair a group, right? Yeah, yeah it's yeah. not real big, but it's there. It's huge, but yeah. So, um, I'll, I'll, is it a one-time fee? No. No, it's uh, regular. It's, it's ongoing. As a service. As a service. I hate, I hate all this rent oh. behavior. Yeah, so there is the a local uh, sort of... I hate rent behavior. Yeah. That's oh. rent. Oh. You're a non-profit? Well, the thing is, five bucks here, five bucks no. there, if you're on the coast, no. it's nothing. Here, yeah. it's a bigger chunk. Right. So it's yeah, there it's like part of a gasoline gallon. Oh, yeah, like, you wouldn't even notice. Yeah, I mean, they Yeah. Is it only five bucks to beat up? Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah, but I'm just saying, saying, isn't it? If it's $5, I. Five here, five there, pretty soon. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not like sure what it is anymore. I feel like, you know, yeah, I don't know what their current rate terrible. scale is at all. Yeah, but, I, mean, I mean, it would make us more discoverable. I feel like we could, like, all pitch in 20 cents at that point. No <laughs> yeah. If right. I had money at some point, really? And then he took power and... <laughs> Look, I, I mean, all that is power. not <laughs> correct, son. You work for a high-tech company <laughs> now. You get paid a high-tech yes. wage at a high-tech company downtown. Okay. There was at least five years difference. 200 a year. We had, I I had 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 <laughs> yeah, no. 1650 uh, a month? Yeah, it's oh. like 200 a year. Yeah. Wow. If you go with yeah. their lower price stuff. Yeah, for the U.S., yeah, I was mm -hmm. thinking it was closer. To it's only it's only uh, about 120 a year if you live outside the U.S. Yeah. Oh, so she get a PO box in Panama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we created the Demi Corporation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and our next topic is on tour and how to evade <laughs> pricing meetup pricing. <laughs> so there is a local meetup like uh, group that. Uh, I think it's like the Des Moines Web Collective. Yeah, the DS, DSM Web Collective. Yep, yeah, which I usually post to that and then submit the, the pull request. And provided I do it before the week of, uh, they're usually good about approving the pull request. Uh, this month, I think they forgot. Holidays. But, Holidays. yeah. Have we ever talked about sponsorship? Or I guess I say we fairly loosely because I'm fairly uh, busy, but... So, I mean, I am not opposed to any sort of sponsorship or people willing to give money or whatever. However, I'm not the one that's going to go out and seek it. We Just because, it. yeah, we, we've had, like, like sponsors. individual meetings to have it? Yeah. Right. Yeah, we had, we had like, in, invitations by Pilar to be downtown and stuff, yeah. but that was not a regular thing. And there, there were, there's been... Uh, like, say, if we're at a headhunter place, they've been watch. willing to pay for a pizza, or I think Facebook's offered a couple times, and then they could never figure out how to actually pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> because their corporate accounting system got in the way. I thought they wouldn't let us in for security purposes. Either. That's what I thought it was, too. Uh, so they, they were willing to pay for it if we didn't meet there. Uh, <laughs> Right. Well, that's really so we couldn't social. figure out how to let us in or how to pay for it. <laughs> yeah. And I think the other problem was that we well, would have had to sign uh, NDAs yeah. to be there. And at a non-Facebook. Yes. And uh, based on the it's like extortion. Uh, libertarian views of this group, that was somewhat of a non-starter. And just was a... What, what would we disclose if we didn't actually see the learning? <laughs> yeah. So what do we care? Yeah. 
Like if we, we never we got anywhere close to a Facebook facility us. or Facebook yeah. employees, <laughs> why, why, do, why do we care? Wait, so anyway, though, <laughs> I, I kind of just want to see what's in this book. They overshare all of your data, but they're like, except they're ours. We can't. Don't talk about our stuff. We'll just spill all of your secrets. Yeah, can't we just up a ULO for them to sign? So that we should, yeah. So I, I've seen people post that on their Facebook status. Yes. <laughs> it's supposedly binding against uh, the Zuck himself. Yes, exactly. Uh, but so then the, the other question I had was, was uh, so right now we're sort of a somewhat semi-formal uh, uh, BDFL style of uh, administrativeness. Do we want to go back towards the more formal, like, president, vice president, those sort of things, and have, like, a real election and, like, less uh, the Andy show? Depends on if we're using an electoral college or just popular vote. I mean, you know, <laughs> those two don't always get the same results. <laughs> I don't know Anarchy has its merits. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen seems to have good ideas of uh, how to take the group forward. I, I, yeah. I, I can see a uh, viceroy at least. <laughs> 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 It's got Lord a Steven. Turn. There's a butterfly <laughs> effect with that one. Well played. My the that's okay, I'm willing to be your scrum master. You can master. delegate, <laughs> but if we're all expecting you to follow through. Yeah. <laughs> also, there has been, except for our current uh, vice president, Ken, a long tradition uh, <laughs> before okay. I was vice president that you got elected and then never showed up ever again and moved out of the entire uh, <laughs> state. Oh, yeah. had a new job. You can't do worse than that, I guess. Who, who was the first one that did that one? I can't remember, but it was like three or four years in a row that the, the vice president would get elected and then just move. <laughs> and accept That's the new hilarious. Job. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so. Monroe lives like Louisiana, here I come. Mm -hmm. But so look forward to a uh, uh, poll coming out here as soon as I get the, the wording right. John, I had sent you a, a message in Mattermost. Or not, Cal. Darn it. Slack. Really? Yeah. yeah you're on corporate that. mode, man. Yeah. It's You've been, been brainwashed. It's been a rough week, man. <laughs> Once we turn off the video, let me tell you. <laughs> Is it, you said the, the app's called Matter Most or Plasma Least. Uh, <laughs> okay, sorry, <laughs> but uh, I thought a comic moment was merited. Yeah. But. but yeah, so anyway, though. Uh, those are sort of the questions that are going to come up. We've uh, hit definitely our uh, time for uh, the second part of the meeting, which is uh, SIGBAP, Special Interest uh, Beer and Provisions. Uh, anyone who actually lives over on this end of town that knows where anything is? I'm like, yeah, I can give you some suggestions if you want. Like a townhouse or something? There's, there's some pizza and beer place. Like tavern. 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 That's what tavern. it is. Yeah. 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 Yeah, they're still open. There's a couple going to Casey's not too far away. <laughs> Casey's Pizza is good stuff, man. Just hang out by the slurp machine, right? Uh, Here, Casey's Pizza is switching Casey's. to a digital uh, token system for their 10, ten free pizza. Yes, I one. saw that. Yeah. yeah. Although I've never system, actually so. used any other. The most I've ever got is two slices at a time. So. Closes at 10. Yeah. I mean, that yeah. sounds doable. Tavern? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Tavern it is. All right. You talk about the one right down here, down the street? Yeah. yeah. Not the cheapest place. Well, no? okay. Well, uh, okay. Uh, Do you have a suggestion? Where, where no, I was just, the old tavern's the only place I know of. I just know that they... This local. Phones isn't the cheapest either, so... Yeah, yeah I mean, everything else is not going to exactly be free. Uh, Casey's is cheap. Well, <laughs> so we could have Casey's delivered in here. I, I mean, I'm... This is a nice space. Yeah. How do they feel about... I like the tavern. This? Tavern's cool. Like, what, what, what did you do to control them the... I paid them money. Did you pay them money? Uh, <laughs> for uh, other reasons than this, and it comes along. Interesting. Caboose. So you have a you have an inn. Yes. How's their downtown space? 